Good mythical afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Ayala with another vlog for you. This is Weapons of War, the Civil War. Please make sure that you're writing down your notes. And it's at the end of this, there will be a question to put in the doobly-doo, which I think is down here this year, I think, or, or wherever direction that I have it this year. So anyway, uh, please make sure that you're reviewing this and that you're going to write down your notes so that you can be prepared for one of my tests because you know what? That's your job. And as always, you can review this as many times as you need to make sure that you are prepared. So, this is Weapons of the Civil War. So, why are we discussing the Weapons of the Civil War? Well, let me move my face. So, the first thing is that the Civil War was the deadliest war in American history, and it's best to understand why. And when we look at these casualties, the Union had approximately 100, 117,000 deaths. Uh, about two, about a quarter of a million or 250,000 died from disease, which makes 360,000 people killed in some way, shape, or form during this war. The Confederacy, which had a lot less people, 94,000 battle, battle deaths. Uh, the disease, 164,000, and uh, approximately a quarter of a million killed. Uh, all Americans, including some civilians, is over a million people killed, almost all of them males, uh, and about 30 to 40 percent of the southern males were killed. And the reason that the uh, our casualty numbers were so high was because the improvement of military technology it is the very first war after the Industrial Revolution. So we're using old battle tactics with new weaponry. So it's a really good idea to understand what new weaponry made this occur. So from here, uh, the first one are brand new rifles. We have the 1863 Springfield rifle. It was much faster. You used a cap uh, instead of a spark. So you put a priming cap right here on top of the uh, rifle. You hit the trigger. That hammer comes down, sparks it, and out goes the mini ball. So we have a brand new musket ball instead of a mini instead of a, ball, a lead ball like we did during the American Revolutionary War or the um, Mexican-American War, we actually had a mini ball, which is the precursor to a bullet, uh, and this is a bullet with a hole in the base. So at the very bottom of the mini ball, if you notice right here, there's a little bit of a hole, and that way is when you pour in the black powder into the top of your musket, uh, it will sit right inside of that mini ball, so that when the cap hit and it's sparked and primed, it will be able to shoot out with the rifling grooves and actually get a really nice spin, and because it was a little bit more conical, at the top had a lot less wind resistance, so was able to go much further and was a lot more accurate than the muskets prior. So please make sure you know that. Uh, from there we have our cavalry, uh, which are soldiers on horseback. So pretty simple and self-explanatory. Over here we have the Gatling gun, which is one of my favorite weapons. It's a mini barreled gun mounted on a well on a whole bunch of wheels and it was spun by hand using a hand crank. So and you would spin that hand crank and the barrels would spin and shoot multiple rounds out, so one per barrel. And the faster you can spin it, the faster it will shoot. And at the top, you had a magazine that was fed vertically through, and that you would uh, usually have a second person who would be sitting there feeding the magazine and dumping water on the barrels to keep it cool as the other person is cranky. This would be a precursor to the machine gun, like the Browning, uh, which we will see later in World War I and World War II. From there, we have the ironclads. Time to move my face. Woo! So, our warships are covered in iron. So, they would take a wooden warship and they would cover the whole thing with iron. And this was the first, uh, these were the first real uh, ships that were made of metal that could actually sail on the rivers or the seas. Later, they be they turned into battleships and destroyers and f and items like that. And the first battle between the Iron Class between the USS Monitor and the CSS Merrimack on March 9th of 1862. It actually ended up in a draw because they couldn't shoot through their each other's armor. So you had the Merrimack Right here, the, C the CSS, the Confederacy, which used kind of like a tent-like structure with the cannons on the side. So it still had to turn around to actually shoot someone. While the Monitor had two seven-pounders inside of a brand new invention called the turret. So it didn't matter which direction that you were, and it would be able to spin and shoot in multiple directions. And because of this battle, they were actually sold throughout the world. The United States government ended up having to sell these weapons. Uh, especially to France, they really wanted to buy a lot of these because of the uh, the Prussian and uh, the Pr the Franco-Prussian War. Excuse me. So from there, that's the end. Uh, very very simple questions for the doobly doo. You have one of two options. Your first one: 
what weapon of the Civil War do you think made the biggest effect and why? Or, if you want, look up a new piece of machinery or a new weapon from the modern era or later during our time period. And why is that so important? And what effects did it have on military technology or inside of a war? There's some great things out there. I want to see what you guys come up with. And as always, don't forget to be awesome.